River's Lake Headed is very small in the upper waters where it comes out of the lake. It's where we do most of our trout fishing. Think extremely tiny, like little freestone creek. It's joined another mile down by another tributary, and then another mile after that by another tributary, and then it becomes the main stem. It's smaller than most typical steelhead rivers. It's still intimate. Even though it's intimate, there's still lots of large pools that are very conducive to spay casting, both single and spay. You can fish the river really well with both. The water is normally very clear because it's lake-headed and because it's never been logged. There's a lot of structure. Every run is very defined. It's not like a large river that you may be unsure of where the fish are going to be sitting. You can always tell where they're going to be sitting in these runs. Even for someone who's never previously still had fished, they'd be able to figure it out. There's lots of boulders and logs that hold nice little pocket water behind them. The fish are very trouty in this river. You can fish for them just like you would for trout, as well as swinging in each run. People will always be able to fish water that they want to fish. So if somebody wants to fish just classic riffles, they can. If someone wants to fish large runs with a spay rod, they can. There's lots of riffles, jiggles, pocket water eddies, classic glides, sweet tailouts, especially the tailouts. Lots of the runs are so great for skating drives. Originally, my father purchased the guiding rights for this area back in um, 77, and he had been here prior to that in 75. He was a guide for an outfitter doing a, a moose hunt. The hunting was so bad that the guests had some gear rods, and the only thing that they could do was go down to the outlet to do some fishing. And they caught what they thought were steelhead, but prior to that, the government had no knowledge of there being any steelhead in the river in the fall. They knew there were some in the springtime, but they didn't realize that they were here in the fall. So then my parents bought the license from the outfitter, and after that they gave up hunting within a couple of years because they didn't like it, and they started steelhead fishing. We started with gear at first, but quickly moved toward to fly fishing.
basically we spent most of our winters here for about eight years. In the beginning of those days, this cabin was the only structure here and it was a lot more rustic than it is now, believe it or not. And uh, I was homeschooled, didn't have much of a formal education as a child. My mother was a teacher before we came here, so that worked out really well. I often play a lot by myself. We had a little dog, we had a cat. I learned how to read at a pretty young age, quite quickly, became an avid reader. I was really interested in artwork with my mom, so we'd do a lot of artwork, and since we had to do everything by hand, my parents um, quickly taught me how to use axes and saws and, and machinery to a point. We'd, almost everything that we made in those days was by hand, so I had to learn how to use a hand plane and do notching and, their, and you know, fill the wood box and make shavings. have a, a plane at that time probably about every three months and if we were lucky a little bit sooner so we get a newspaper <laughs> and a few things from town. My mom used to buy like a box of O. Henry bars and make them last for about six months. I'd always get so excited when she'd give me one. Running this business with her today is, is really rewarding because I think when you run it with a family member and especially in a remote place and especially when you're two women and you can make really amazing things happen that most people wouldn't even dream about. Like when we decide to build a camp out here, my mom and I just do it. And so whether or not you fall the trees or you hire someone to do it, you skid the wood, you buck the wood yourself, you mill it, you build the building, you sleep in it, you use it, other people come to stay in it. It's just been a really rewarding thing for both of us to be able to grow up together as two women out here and, um, and be self-sufficient and support ourselves. I asked Nelson to put my rafting socket set into the green raft toolkit, so hopefully he did. Mixed gas, bar oil. Okay, do you know what happened to my socket set for my raft? Right there, my food. All good. Thank All right. you. Out of here. I caught my first fish at two. We lived 
on a little piece of property outside of Hazelton. I had a cutthroat stream, and I used to go down there with a willow pole and <laughs> a worm, a little piece of mono. And uh, when we moved out here, I caught my first steelhead at five. I distinctly remember being saying to my dad, I'm like, Daddy, Daddy, it's gonna pull me out of the boat. I'm really scared because we caught it in the lake. I spin fished until I was about six, and then one of the guests gave me a fly rod and a little trout rod and reel. So I used that quite a bit, and um, I still did a little bit of gear fishing until I was 16. One day I went out by myself and caught about, there was about five steelhead. It was four for sure, but it might have been five. And my dad came home with the guests, and he had, they hadn't caught anything that day. And my dad was really mad that I uh, <laughs> was the child of a fly fishing lodge and was out there throwing spinners. So he tore a big strip off of me and told me I was never allowed to use a spinning rod again. And I haven't ever since then. So that's why I'm pretty into fly fishing. This valley is really pristine. It's never been logged. It's never been dammed. I certainly hope it never will be in my lifetime and forever. One of the reasons I love this place so much is there's a lot of history in this valley. People in the old days, Aboriginals used to travel up and down this river and up, up for hundreds of years. You can feel a lot of energy in this place and, bef and know before you that people have walked on the same path that you're on. There's just an abundant amount of bird life, grizzly bears, black bears, wolves, moose, almost every single bird, plant, bug, and small creature you could ever imagine. It's really an amazing experience to be able to just sit or wander up and down the river and have daily encounters with animals and see them in their natural habitat and know that it's still unroded and unlogged and undammed and about as pristine as can possibly be. Since we've been here for 32 years, since I was about three years old, and lived in this valley for that long and just done all this work on these camps and run this operation, it's become, and it always has been, more like my family home than anywhere else. And no matter whatever else I do with my life, I'll never feel as close to anywhere as I do here. And it, in no uncertain terms, I'm gonna spend the rest of my life here. I would much rather be here in the middle of the wilderness without modern amenities like internet and television and just be moving up and down the river all the time. It's way more conducive to my lifestyle and who I am. Mm -hmm. 